Hey guys, and welcome back to Becca Does Stuff. Today, I wanted to go over five areas in which you can green your Halloween. So number one on my list is costumes. Let's start there. Costumes, for the most part, that you find on Amazon or at these big conglomerates like Spirit Halloween that just pop up around the fall, you're gonna find really unsustainable costumes. They're not typically made in ethical or sustainable ways. It's a one in a million chance to be the recipient of a message in a bottle. In 2012, Oregon mom Julie Keith opened a package of Halloween decorations bought from Kmart to find a letter hidden inside. It was written by a political prisoner forced into one of the most feared labor camps in China. We learn how our quest for a bargain, even for cheap goods, can cost lives. And they're just made of plastic basically and we all know the problems with plastics in general and microplastics so I won't get into all of that but instead of running to Spirit Halloween and finding a costume that probably 60 other people in your town are also wearing, I would recommend going to a thrift store and getting creative, borrowing from a friend, shop in your closet, really get creative. I mean, that's the whole point of it, right? Like just really having fun and expressing ourselves creatively. I've seen people make really awesome costumes out of things that you find around your house like cardboard boxes, aluminum foil, and whatever other random junk that you might think is just trash. You could really think outside of the box, no pun intended, and make something really neat out of that. And then I would also recommend if you have something like, let's say you're wearing a wig because you're dressing up like a hippie. Well, maybe that wig can be used next year for another costume like um, a disco queen or a witch. See if there's parts of your costume, if not all of it, that can be repurposed into another costume. And if not, maybe you can donate it, sell it, or give to a friend. Obviously, it's really wasteful to just buy a costume to wear it for a few hours one day and then throw it out. Second thing I wanted to talk about was pumpkins. Here in the US, pumpkins are a big deal in the fall and specifically around Halloween because we like to take pumpkins and we hollow them out and we carve them and put candles inside of them and make what is called a jack-o'-lantern. And once you do that, you really don't wanna eat it because it's usually sitting outside and yeah, it's not, not so fresh, so a lot of those pumpkins just end up in the landfill. If you're making a jack-o'-lantern out of a real pumpkin, I would recommend that you compost it if you're able to. If not, there's also other creative ways in which you can make jack-o'-lantern type of things, like I've seen people take oranges and grapefruits or squashes or pumpkins and just draw on them instead of carving them. And so you can look at it for a little while and then you can take off the outer shell and and eat the contents of the inside and therefore the food is not going to waste. I would also highly recommend getting your pumpkins from a pumpkin patch, like from a small farm, if you're able to do that rather than the ones at the grocery store. They have pony rides, oh my God. Haunted corn maze, tractor rides. Also, to me personally, I think that the ones from the pumpkin patches are so much more fun and so much more interesting because they usually have some gnarly like bumps and scars and they're not your typical just round-ish pumpkin. They're, you know, sometimes they're kind of disfigured looking and that can be so much more fun when you're making some kind of like ghoul or monster. Some of them with their little discolorations and the different varieties that you can get and the little bumps that are on them, I think make beautiful centerpieces and decor for your home. Also, there's so many things that you can make out of your pumpkin. So if you have it just for decoration, before it goes bad, you can make dog treats out of them, roast the seeds. You can make a pesto out of it or just use the seeds like on a salad or a topping of another dish or just by themselves roasted in the oven with salt and pepper and olive oil. They're really good. But the pumpkin itself, of course, you can make pumpkin pie. That's what a lot of people do with it. But there's just like, a whole slew of other things you can do with it. Do a quick Google search and you'll find all kinds of recipes. So please don't just buy a perfectly good pumpkin and have it on your table for a few weeks and then throw it out. Number three on my list is decorations. 
We have an overabundance of decorations on this planet. Like we don't need to keep producing more and more and more. Instead of just going to like TJ Maxx or Spirit Halloween or wherever you're going, just pump the brakes for a minute, try to get creative. Again, it's all about being creative. So why not set up some limitations for yourself and see if you can really like have to hunt around and get those creative juices flowing to find the perfect decor for your home or to make the perfect decor for your home. Try hitting up a thrift store, try shopping your house, try making something on your own. You can also look online on places like OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. You can check out Pinterest. That's a really great place to find some really fun, creative decorations that you can make. Also costumes or recipes or anything really. Also, instead of raking up leaves in your yard, I don't know, like back in the East Coast, we used to rake up our leaves and put them in these big plastic garbage bags that looked like pumpkins or maybe they looked like a ghost or a Frankenstein head or something like that. And we would have these big plastic garbage bags of leaves and then they would end up in the dump. And that's really wasteful, not just because of the plastic that we're producing just to put leaves in and throw out, but also because when the leaves fall and land on the ground, they decompose and those nutrients go back into the earth, which the trees, plants, and microorganisms use to live and thrive. And if you don't like how they look and you wanna see your green grass lawn, you can break them up into a pile and let them compost. You could put them in your compost, but putting them in a plastic bag and then throwing them out is is so wasteful. Organic materials should not be going into the landfill. They should be decomposing naturally into the earth. And number four on my list is trick-or-treating. A lot of people who have children like to go trick-or-treating, but you need something to carry all that candy in that you're collecting. You don't need to go out and buy a brand new bucket. I've gone to several thrift stores lately and there have been tons of Halloween baskets and buckets, and you don't even need like a Halloween themed plastic bucket per se. In my days, we had to use things like pillowcases or just random buckets or baskets. You can, if you have any like little wicker baskets, you can use them for Easter, for Halloween. You could use a grocery tote, even a plastic or paper grocery bag. If you have random gift bags lying around, anything that is easy to carry and is a vessel of some sort that can hold the candy will work. And number five on my list is candy, speaking of trick-or-treating. So if you're giving out candy to the local neighborhood kids, you probably have to have the candy in packaging. You can't really avoid that because, I mean, germs and allergies and, you know, sanitary concerns. So people really want that wrapped in something, and I get that, but if you're concerned about the plastic waste that goes into that, because I mean, let's face it, there's a ton of plastic waste that goes into the production of the Halloween candy. I would recommend looking for candies that don't come in plastic, like Nerds, Milk Duds. There's a lot of different candies that don't come in plastic. So you could try doing that. Or if your main concern is about ethics, you could focus more on fair trade chocolates instead of just going straight to your typical everyday grocery store candies that are kind of problematic. <laughs> not fair trade, not sustainably sourced, yada, yada, yada. I'm not gonna tell you exactly which candies to get or which ones are the best. That's really for you to decide. It might be more important to you that it's vegan than plastic free or fair trade or sustainably sourced. I'll let you make that decision on your own. If you can find candy that checks all those boxes, that's great. <laughs> but anyway, if you are not handing out candy to strangers and you're just doing like a Halloween thing at your house and you want to have like a candy bowl for like a little party or, or whatever you're doing for your family. You can get like 
bulk nuts in the bulk section of your grocery store if you have that accessible to you. You can make some kind of candied nuts or candied popcorn. You know, you can get creative and you don't necessarily have to buy a bunch of candies in little plastics. You could just make something really fun that's package free. So anyway, that's my five ways in which you can green your Halloween this year. I hope that this video was helpful and inspirational to you. If you guys have any additional ideas about how we can have a more sustainable Halloween this year, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day. Happy Halloween. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.